This is Tamhana from Tamogemon Holding KS and today we are going to look at running some self-tests on a Tektronix TDS754D DPO. Essentially the process is much the same for the entire generation so if your serial number doesn't look exactly like this there is no need to worry. The first thing these DPOs tend to have problems with the display. So if you buy a DPO from a store and you don't see much on the screen, attach any random crummy Philips or otherwise VGA screen and enjoy the fruits of your labor. So, we are now seeing the startup with some characteristical patterns being displayed on the screen. In addition to this, I'll try to show you something else which is interesting. Namely, here on top, you will see a number pad on top of the CPU board, which shows you a running number. And this number can be correlated with the, ser with the service manual, which I will link in the show notes below, to find out more about what is going on. Well. In the meantime, our DPO has completed the booting cycle and shows us, having started up successfully, its error log. We see, in the case of this particular DPO, we've got one fail in the acquisition interface. And now it's time for doing a more detailed self-test. Press Shift and Display to get into the diagnosis and self-service menu which looks approximately like this and then simply push the buttons below the screen until you get to the DIAC or R menu make sure you sel have select or selected push execute and say run and now the scope will think a second and will start to reboot and will run a more detailed error diagnosis. As we can see here. This reboot is completely normal. The tech will always reboot when doing a self-test. It's not, a pro not anything which you should be concerned about. What you should, however, be concerned about is what happens after it boots up because then it will normally, I am emphasizing normally, display a list of problems which have occurred. Ours has a memory problem which I yet have to debug and very soon we'll hear the scope complain about it. And you see, here is the error. And the error log can of course be accessed from the menu we looked at before, or it can be collected via GPIB, which is the more helpful option and which we are going to look at in another step. One more little bit of advice for all those who are looking at the error log. you will see you cannot scroll to the left and to the right only up and down when you are viewing on the scope and furthermore you must know that the latest data isn't always put in at the bottom you see here the new memory errors are here whereas some other data is much below so you should always look over the full error log which quite incidentally can be deleted by using the secure erase option. And then one final gotcha, which I'm showing mainly for the benefit of my friend Ice T from EEV Blog. Some unscrupulous sellers modify the tech so that it does not show any errors. This is done via these buttons here, this dip switch here on top of the processor board. So 
check if you get bad input, whether it's all looking like it should. And with that, the first installment of TDS 754D analysis is over. Good luck performing self-tests and finding errors in your scopes.